Hello and welcome. Hello. I'm the Restless Kaiser. I'm James Watchman. But together, we are Modeling for Advantage. James, Necromunda. You love Necromunda. I, I have uh, strong feelings about Necromunda. Strong feelings about again. Table rising. Feelings. T table rising. Just oh, I see something under the table <laughs> yeah. pushing it up. All right. This is a very heavy box. Yeah. I think this is the third launch box for Necromunda in its new right. iteration. Necromunda, yeah. You and I, what, five to ten years ago, whenever it came out, <laughs> played the Goliath yeah. Escher thing we did. once. Yeah. And then I sold the minis because that was horribly unbalanced. <laughs> it was. Um, there was another set they'd done... Maybe no, there was an Ash Waste set as well. Maybe there was four. an Ash Waste. There might be the fourth. Anyway, this one is the latest. It is. Whatever the rules may be, I love Necromunda. Yeah, definitely. As a universe, as a as a like contained mm. world, yeah, it's so dense. And despite the fact that there must be literally millions of grubby hive cities with mm. gangs fighting out all over the Imperium. Mm -hmm. This is the only one this that anybody's ever cared about. This is the one. <laughs> this yeah. is the one. So should we get the box open? We certainly should. Um, we are going to review the contents and we're going to talk a little bit about the story, I think. Um, but the weight of it is quite noticeable. So it's the same size as the mm. uh, Escher versus Goliath gang. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. So do you Templates! Get, you start <laughs> with... The template. Now, interestingly, these see-through ones, the type of plastic they're made out of, the, the, the not clear ones are often too heavy for the mountings mm. and they fall out. Mm -hmm. Not that that matters because you need to take them out anyway. But yes, this is a game system with templates. Love it. Um, do you remember what the templates are called, James? This is the Flamer one. Flamer. Small blast, large blast. Small blast and large blast. There you go. Look at that. He's a, he's a Warhammer <laughs> pro. All right. Then we got lots of grey plastic. Okay. Uh, I'll take the spiky ones, my size. Yeah. Shall we list what is in the box as well once we've done this? Oh, was that on the back of the box? I believe so. Uh, uh, that's for you. They look like goons. They do. This is for me. And this is the bulkhead set you got with the old one, I think. Uh, it's not the same bulkhead set, but it is a bulkhead set. Cool. Oh, the bases are the modern style. We get the... Yeah, get you got them. my... Get yeah, them. yeah, I know one. Oh, you love a flight stand, James? They yeah, they're my favourite thing. Right. Let's open a kit oh. and secret orders envelope. Lovely. More flight stands. You love I hope they're for you. Uh, I don't think they are. Okay. We're open. We're out. Right, box it. contents. Huh. This box contains... Where is it? Box contents. 176 page rule book. That was that really heavy thing that you yeah, listed, I presume it? it was this lump. Which will also contain other things. Okay, we also have two reference sheets. They'll be in there. A set of plastic doors. I guess that's these. Yep. Tokens and two gaming tiles. Also in here, I guess. Mm. Where's the rule book? Or is this the rule book? That's not a 174 page rule book, is sure it, James? Isn't. Shall I break <laughs> the seal up. and yeah. check that these things are in here? So you're reading them out. Yep. Ah, yes, in here we have a, a rule book. Oh, it's thick. Crib sheets, tokens, uh, but no board. Oh. Where's that then? Are they in there? Is are it a paper playmat, James? Let's find out. It does say gaming tiles, not gaming boards. It's a paper play, man. Okay. Uh, we're going through the contents. We, we didn't are, even get that far. That is the contents. This is the two gaming tiles. We have a deck of 88 game cards. Yes. A range ruler. Yes. And templates, which we had a look at a second ago. Templates, yeah. 16 Necromunda dice. Look at them go. All they're sorts they're of different the dice. In, in, in horrifically grim colours. It's just black and white. Black. No, that's just like a cyan type, really light, vomitous blue. Oh, I'll take black then, thanks. The black ones are not those spots. Sometimes. So, uh, 16 Necromunda dice, 29 plastic Citadel miniatures, of mm. which are Forces of the Malstrain, six Malstrain Gene Stealers, mm -hmm. eight Brood Scum, and four Malstrain Tyramites, which are these funny little fellas. The Secundan Incursion Gang, there's two Aura Spy Hunters, eight Vansar Tech Hunters, and one Karyatid Prime. 
Oh, you do have the flight stands. Brain on a stick. They are yours, the brain on a stick. Brain on a stick! So let's have a look at these as we go through. So the Mal Strain Gene Stealers. The Mal Strain Gene Stealers. We're talking about the plastic first. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So there are what look to be, let's just check out the identical. Three per. Yeah, so it's two identical sprues. Excellent. There you go. Thank you very much. Very handy. So I've I've kind of and these gene stealers. Mm -hmm. Then they're not pure strains. No, they're not. No, which is why they call them the mouth strains. Yes, they've been interfered with, and then the house has gone like self destruct. Yeah, I think because of this. Uh, yeah, I think that was the storyline. Yeah, at, at, at least in part. We've also got the ter tyramites, tyramites on here as well. These little floaty fellas. They're on the. They're the brain on a stick. Yeah. So we've got the brain on a stick, and we got the mal strains. So yeah, they've been. Uh, Fiddled with behind the bike sheds by a tech marine. Yes, um, to try and make it, you know, work for us. Yeah, um, and it turned out, you know, fitty fitty. <laughs> fitty fitty. Could have turned out better, could have turned out worse. Fitty know? fitty, yeah. <laughs> and then everybody died. Yeah, well, I mean, that's 50 50 for the Mechanicus, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so they, they are much more kind of, I don't know, a, a plague or rotten looking yeah. than pure strange genes. They, 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 they don't look like clean, lean mm. killing machines. They were talking about in one of the um, community articles how they like they wanted them to not get confused for gene stealers from a distance. Right. <laughs> so they needed to make sure that they had something quite weird about them the entire time. Yeah, yeah. And they, they've got quite... So that, that principally, they're just a lot more spiky. Yeah. They've got a very spiky, like, Thin, spiky mm. carapace, um, and 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 the claws look a lot longer and a lot thinner. But they're still, you know, they're still mm. the, the the children of the forearm gods. Yeah, I, it looks like what they were going for was uh, you get parasites that take over the brains of uh, certain insects and makes them climb up onto the top of mountains and oh, the, right, yeah. onto the top of plants. Um, so all of these little tendrils look like the tendrils that grow at the backs of their heads. Right. So right. I'm, I'm, I don't know what the storyline is well enough, but I'm guessing they were at least leaning towards that aesthetically. But it could actually be that the mechanical guy was trying to use a parasite to control gene stealers, right. and that's yes. hence why yes. they look like this. Yes. That, that's my headcanon now, and that's it forever. Absolutely. So they're, they're all pretty straightforward models. You've got these nice, the usual sort of full cover mm -hmm. color instructions where it's telling you, you know, the yellow bit is what you're going to attach next, the blue bit is what you attach last, mm -hmm. and so forth on the builds. The there doesn't look to be a lot in the way of options though. You're gonna get three different mm. monopose gene stealers. Twice. Twice. <laughs> Interestingly, also not uh snap fit miniatures. The not fully, even not even remotely. miniatures. A lot of it is socketed, yeah. but looking at the way the miniatures are assembled, because these sockets are for arms and legs, I think there'd be very limited amounts of ways you could pose the legs uh, because of the claws and things. They're socketed but heavily keyed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. But they're not in too many parts, which is good, and there aren't too many miniatures. And then these brain on a stick. <laughs> yeah. So uh, there's two of them on here, and again, they're, they're in two or three parts, two mm. halves of a brain. And then a little, little, little wiggly thing um, in front. Cool. Now, I understand in this game, these are absolutely terrifying. Are they monsters? They are. They're literally monsters, yeah. James. They're literally monsters. And I understand that even one of these is going to present a real problem mm. for a regular gang. Mm hmm that used to be how it was in old Necromunda, at least. The, right. One of the beautiful pleasures of Necromunda in the olden days mm -hmm. is that because it's got a new army and a white dwarf. <laughs> yeah. Which is partly thought through. Because it's such an adaptable game, mm. like it, it's so rules dense that you can do a lot with it. <laughs> right. Right. Um, so there was a like. Um, like a xenomorph alien style game type that was put into one of the magazines that was related right. to this, yeah. where it was literally one gene stealer, and that was what messed up your entire force. Yes. It was like a one player yeah. game, there is one gene stealer, and I feel like they've kept the spirit of that. Yes. <laughs> Although you get six of them. You do. Uh, but I think uh, as we as we got to look at yeah. the rules and so forth, um, you know that. Because the other element to these is the brood scum. It is. Little fellas. Look at them go. And again. We get two sprues of brood scum, mm -hmm. two identical. These are, these are teeny weeny sprues. This is like a character sprue. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to have a look have at a that one? one, please? Yes. Um, so these one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight. They're sort of a halfway cross between uh, Chaos Cultists and Gene Steeler Cult Acolytes. Yes. They've got the sort of like void suit minor thing going on. Yes. But they've also got like lots of little knives and pistols and things and not quite the same suits. <laughs> yes. So these guys don't look like miners or soldiers. No. Is, is the thing. Because they could have easily just dumped in the bro either the Brood Brothers, yeah. you know, which were the old Imperial Guard figures, mm -hmm. or uh, with some Gene Stillery bits. Yeah. Just some cult. <laughs> just some Gene Stiller cult. Or the, <laughs> the newer ones that yeah. they've done. Um, which have a bit more of an industrial mining, mm. whereas these look a little bit more like scruffy gangers. They do, yeah, and which, which with is adapted a gear, so like none of them have got the same two leg plates and that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, all... yeah. And so be between them, we we've, we've got four mm. four body types, but they do, they do not. It's not telling you build this guy twice. Oh, okay. It's got. It's actually listed eight oh, different figures. So obviously you're reusing a body type, mm -hmm. but it can take. So these are going to be a little bit more adaptable, um, because a lot of it is yeah. one-handed weapons. Yes, I mean what's fantastic about that to me is that if you do want two las guns, you've got two las guns. Yeah, like it, you don't need to build this exactly like it's shown in the book if you don't want to. If you're really into the guy who has a flail and a las pistol, then go for it. Do that twice. Oh yeah, you can build the bruise gun with a las gun twice. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, which is cool. Yeah, there's a little. It's a tiny sprue, and you can do a lot with it, which is quite unusual. <laughs> yes, that's cool. And if this was if this was for an army, mm. I'd be disappointed that there's four bodies. Mm. But this isn't for an army. Yeah. This is this is part of. Mm. Now, story-wise, though, this troubles me a little bit more, is how... I mean, I understand in a Gene Steeler cult situation, they, they're under the psychic influence of the Patriarch. Mm -hmm. So these are presumably just sort of scum left around in Hive Secundus that, again, have, have fallen under... Looking at them, they've still got the, like, um, Tyranid details to the faces. Like, they're, they're going to be... Um, Oh, so you so, think these are these are hybrids? Oh, yeah, yeah. They're hybrids. Yeah, so they don't yeah, absolutely have right. They've, to be. they've got Klingon bumps and things. Yeah, it looks like they don't have to be, but they can be. But there's options for heads here. I imagine that they are. Yeah, they're they're gene stealer uh, acolytes that are a few generations down from a broodlord, which is somewhat yes, under yes. a tech marine's control. So one of the good things that you've seen with, and a lot, a lot of companies are doing this, not just Games Workshop, but the things I really like to see is the, the, like, the little applique bits. So mm -hmm. you get this like on the back of your belt where you stick your grenades and your water bottle or whatever. They've just produced four slightly different iterations of it. Yeah. So it's not like everybody's got the identical knife, water canteen and ammo pouch. Mm -hmm. They're all just, just mix it up a little bit. Can I look at your screw? Thank you. Why, because you think it might be slightly different? I think they might be slightly different. Uh, I'm probably wrong. No, I'm wrong. It's okay. Overlay Don't them. Worry. Yeah. Is the, is the easiest way yeah, to Yeah, no, they're exactly the same. They're exactly the same. At a moment there. That's all right. Very uh, cool. Yeah, yeah, I can see you using them for uh, some guard or something as well. Like they don't have to just be used for this. And they, and they can certainly fit into anyone who's already got gene stealer yeah. in the way that the gene stealers probably don't. Yeah, um, these look different. I mean, I'll but I guess these don't have. I don't think. And see, they don't have the gene stealer cult iconography. They don't know. They don't have the that about them. Mm -hmm. Although they're kind of presumably. Yeah, because they're not a gene stealer cult. Because they're not a gene stealer cult. <laughs> I'm surprised oh, they're they not. Lean... They're no longer. Presumably, they're probably not connected to the Tyranids. No, I, I'm surprised they didn't lean more into the Mechanicum side of things a little bit. Like have them have something there, but maybe that was intentional. There, there is a sawn-off shotgun. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's very fun. <laughs> uh, so weapons-wise, we've got auto guns, sawn-off shotties, axes, auto pistols. Fighting that's not a knife, that is a fighting, fighting knife. knife. That's probably because in Necromunda there's knife and fighting knife are two sure. different things. Uh, auto pistol, fight knife, lasgun, flail. Yeah, and then shot another gun. shot. Cool. Uh, so that's those. It is. Sometimes you can learn more from looking at the instructions than mm. the sprues themselves and when they're new to you. And you just see, we've opened this box for the first time. Yeah. Now, the Vansar Tech Hunters. This is a new Vansar sprue. It is. It's yeah. not the Vansar gangers that, your daddy that, that you already get. Because these are Vansar tech hunters. They're a specific crew mm -hmm. to go out and recover 
well, I assume it's like Archeotech or whatever. And it is quite different. There's a lot of lighter gear here. There's not so much of the rad cannons, which are rad. Vans are rad. That rad is a fact. Heck. They yeah. are literally rad. Yeah. Oh, it's very fun. Yeah. It's, it's nice to see a... Um, so a now it's two again. Turn on screws again. again. Um, always love a big cloak. <laughs> yeah. Always great to see. It's a and, thick cloak. And boy. it's the best type of cloak because it's not in any way attached to the body. Mm. You've just you've just got that. Um I mean with plastic glue it's gonna stick it stick on just fine, it I'm is, sure. Yeah. And I'm sure with the particular model it's aimed to go on, it couches around the kind of breathing equipment or whatever perfectly. Mm. But you can use that on other models. And you can have a uh, Two sprues of them, and not have two characters. <laughs> and not have two characters. Yes, as an entirely optional yeah. uh, thing. So, oh, ah, but well that's a piece of equipment. That is a refraction cloak. Ah, okay. Um, so it doesn't matter whether you have it or not. It's on the boss man. <laughs> it's on the boss. <laughs> cool Clearly, please. cloak means boss man, right? It does. Oh, yeah. I think this is actually a sniper, but that's fine. <laughs> uh, so gun. yes. So the first model is right. So you build is Vansar. Gun tech with two M's and a K. <laughs> yeah, Gun <-tech>. obviously, obviously, <laughs> could have done with an X in there somewhere. I could with long las and refraction cloak. So long las is a specialized las rifle. Yes. Yeah, uh, which is like a sniper. It hits sniper things long. long. It hits things long. No yeah. Way. So again, these build a pretty conventional way. Um, the body is in a couple. Of, the chest is in a couple of parts. There's a little bit here uh, that goes in the middle. That goes in the middle. Mm -hmm. And that's probably part of the equipment. On These the... are more complex to put together, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. This is a... The, the, the chest is not kit. one or two parts. It's actually three. Yeah. Then you stick the legs on. Then you stick... Is it a head socket? I think it's a head socket. <laughs> to mount the head on later. Yeah. Maybe when they have a head that can go in more than one direction or multiple options or something. Yeah, there we go. So they've got the shoulder straps on them as well. This is a more complex kit than the other one. And, and in particular, the two arms and the gun are in three parts mm. so you've got to get all of those lined up right before you glue mm. it and with plastic glue you've got to hold it there while it dries yeah. but bonus the next guy is the same body which makes a completely different looking model yes and it's good that they're doing that um Mm. side by side so you can see what the things i learned about making this guy mm. i learned this one so that's just auger tech Oh, he's got, because he's got a yeah. servo skull. He's got a plug-in. He's got a plug-in there. Yeah, cool. absolutely. And then we There's get... lots of new things. Shall we, uh, shall we go through these at some point when we actually play a game? <laughs> this is a lot of new units. Biotechnist. Biotechnist. Okay, I'm going to say another <laughs> Auger Tech with a K. Auger Specs and a Vox Array. There's your X. There's your X. Two of them in one unit. Two of them in one unit. <laughs> Yeah. Biotechnology. Uh, Servo and medicine and last pistol. Hell yeah, I love a lot of combat. Gun tech names. with last gun. Technomat with combi weapon, flamer, and a man catcher. Big. Oh, oh, good. This needed to be here. Last one on this page. A Technomat with rad, rad cannon. Gun. Hell yeah. That's rad, man. Uh, so that's those. And they're Very all just cool. the, the Van Sar guys. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can't. Is it. Yes, yeah, some of these are, are a whole page, aren't they? It's two per page because it's, it's the page, same body. The same so body. there's a detailed breakdown for the first one, and then there's just a, what you do different mm -hmm. for the second one. I'm getting it now. Nice. I'm getting it. All right, okay, cool. Then the thing that you're very excited Spire about. Horus Spire yeah. Hunters and Karyatid Prime. I don't know what that means. <laughs> But that's fine. Anyway, I don't care. They're Spire Hunters. <laughs> and they've gone for the big suits in the box, because obviously that's the impressive suits, and then all the mm. little boxes, the little suits in the other boxes. This is uh, Prince's Gone A-Hunting, essentially. This is a proper exosuit, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. This is very expensive technology, and a bunch of really bored, rich kids right. running around. So rather than having like expensive sports cars... Well, like they, a jet they, bike or yeah, something. Yeah, they buy uh, expensive suits, and then they go out hunting. They do scout. parkour. Yeah, they Just, do parkour. Yes. They, do, they do parkour. <laughs> Just with jeans dealers. Uh -huh. Cool. Yeah. These so, these look rad. They're so cool, and they look so easy to paint as well. Because it's it can someone because it's just one big gold suit. <laughs> what's re what's really interesting about it? Because this isn't a bulky armor suit like a Terminator or something. Mm -hmm. 
or power armor, this looks like it's designed very much to facilitate movement and to facilitate yeah. grappling and, and, and things of that nature. And really interesting because of the color choices that they've used on the instructions. Mm. I don't know whether it's standing out to you. It actually looks quite organic. Mm, yeah, I think that's what they were going for a little bit, yeah. Although it's obviously it's metallic plates. Mm -hmm. We'll show you some pictures. Um, yeah, but rather than like a massive guy in a suit of armor, this mm. looks like a small guy in a massive suit of armor, yeah, yeah, yeah. doesn't it, as well? So they've done a really good job of it. Because they could just look like Space Marines or something. They definitely could, yeah. This is very, it's a very new design for the universe, sort of. It's There's some similarities to some stuff in Necromunda, like uh, the big bug guys, I can't remember the name of right now. Um, but yeah. Oh, it, the Amber Claws. Uh, not yeah, Amber Claws. Not, um, not Amber Claws. Umber. Yes, yeah, Umber Hulk. Umber Hulk. Yeah, there you go. No, that's a D and D thing. Um, <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. Those guys, but uh, yeah, it's it's a uniquely Necromunda design. Yes, yes. Now the Caryatid Prime. Oh, he's the little. This. He's the fun little guy. Looks a bit like a cherub. Yes, but not. But evil. But evil looking. But evil. But golem like. Because he's got uh, bat wings. Bat wings are He's got bat wings. Is there also asymmetrical ones a bit low? He's ugly as opposed to baby like. Yeah. Um, so in, in terms of this model wise, I think everything here is new. Everything yeah. here is very much fixed into the story. Uh, we're going to have a little bit of a look at some of the paper um, when we take a, a break to get a coffee in a little <laughs> while. Um, because we've got through the other Wait, components. Where's the fourth wall? <laughs> oh, it's over there. <laughs> it's over that way. It's over that way. Um, when we'll have a little bit of a yep. look at some of the paper and see some oh, of the things. No, there's more plastic. There is a lot more plastic. They gave us the bases that are nice. The pre they gave us uh, pre sculpted, the sculpted, sculpted bases with the Necromunda type industrial flooring. Rock and roll. And there's some bigger ones. There's 40 more Presumably to do the whatever we just talked about. Uh, Spire the Spire Hunters. Aurus. Spire Hunters. Hell yeah. The other components then, paper mat, James. Paper. 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 Are you mocking my accent, La? <laughs> oh no, it's a reference to Waterworld, a movie you hated deeply. I, I, yeah. No one will ever understand. Hate it, okay. is strong. It is. So I was and yet I thought it was crap. <laughs> I only no. I hated you <laughs> sticking up for it. It's not quite the same thing. <laughs> it's okay. Okay. I'm used to behaviors that lose so. respect of my peers. <laughs> this is uh, Matt. This Look is, at him go. This is a Zone Mortalis style paper play mat. It's the cheapest way one could humanly it, make Zone Mortalis. <laughs> it absolutely is. Um, the previous box that we looked at had cardboard tiles, mm -hmm. either nine or twelve of them. They are double-sided. Is that an identical double side? No. No. It's two different ones. It's two different ones. Mine's got a number on this side and a number on this side. Right. Because yours got a number on either side. It's got a well, number Well, he didn't on have this. one on one. No. <laughs> they're so they're diff they are different. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's, cool. that's all right. Look, it's... It's reasonable quality mm -hmm. for a paper mat. The finish on it is good. It's quite shiny, which would make it quite bad for us to play a game on camera. Sure would. <laughs> There'd be a lot of camera glare on it, but that's not a problem that you're going to have at home. It's a good size. Yeah. Um, so if you put two of these side by side, it's going to be nearly three by three mm. if you do it the, the, the yeah, long way. Three by two ish. This is, is this the size of a kill team board? Uh, I think it is. It's the size of a boarding actions board. So it's probably the same thing. The same size. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it's two of them cool. side by side. I can see myself. Buying a real board, and then when I want to go to from my friend's house and play a game, I take this. You take this, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's it's not useless. It's definitely, it's definitely, and it's got the walls drawn on it, and the lines are clear where the walls mm. and the corners are. Yep. So that's good. We did have a look at these. I think the instructions are great. Yep. I don't think I would have understood the sprues if we didn't have them. <laughs> uh, they make different ones of these for different boxes, and and I think that's cute, but perhaps not necessary. This one's got considering most of them are in the bin written on yeah. it, so it must be an Ecromando one. Do you want that one, James? I'm Do you want right. to take it? I don't need the collection to be added uh, to anymore. Okay, you take that spruce on one yeah. side, uh, guys. Now these are a bit disappointing. You're colorblind, oh, yeah. so you're not seeing it. Necromunda does rely on proprietary dice. You're gonna need these. These colors are disgusting. Are they? <laughs> this blue is. I think it's probably because of the Van thing. It's like a cyan. A really light kind of okay. 
Yeah. I enjoy these black and white dice. <laughs> because he's colorblind. Um, and I think that this is to just encourage you to immediately buy a nicer set of dice. Will do. Because uh, you can't play the game without these. I might already own Dan's hard dice. I don't even know. Oh, they're not... It's not equal amounts. They're There's... not equal in any way, actually. Are they? But yeah, they're the ones to sit. Yeah, they are. Are they? Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, you've... Yeah, 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 good. Yeah. Yeah. You've got your... 3d6, three injury dice, uh, you're shooting your automatic fire and, and yep. your hit thing and your sustained fire. Dice. Sustained fire dice. Sustained fire dice, if you fire an auto gun. Yeah. yeah. Which is the, the absolute minimum you need to play. Sure. I don't know whether you ever need more. Bye. Any other different types of dice? Uh, more than three dice. Uh, you, might do with a, you might do with a gene stealer's Very fighting, rare. actually. Uh, these bulkheads, I am sure I have seen these bulkheads before. Okay. If they didn't come with Necromunda, they came with Kill Team. I like. I remember. I don't have them now because mm. I sold stuff on. I have painted this exact sprue. Okay. It might just be uh, that they're a single piece of Zone Mortalis. Right. But Zone Mortalis is bigger blocks than this. Mm, not the Games Workshop version. It's quite thin walls on the Games Workshop version. I think you've not seen the last Zone Mortalis the they did, <laughs> which was which was constructed of of that size squares, right? Okay, blocks. The really expensive pre, pre ash waste set they did, mm -hmm. they had constructible plastic okay. blocks that size. I might never have seen that in person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, tokens, tokens are good. Millions. Uh, they've got. But they're good quality cardstock. Oh, I see. So you remember if you, you did, did you see the Titanicus where they were basically made of paper? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah. Were, they were awful, awful, awful. Yeah. Now, I think this is just because these are the same tokens they've had for a while. <laughs> this is the token set they made. They've got a picture of a Goliath on them, so probably. They've got a picture of a Goliath on them. <laughs> Has it got an Escher on the other side? Uh, no, it's got exclamation marks. Right, okay. But it does have the You've Been Webbed. You've been webbed. <laughs> You've been Well, webbed. there was a man catcher, dude, there on the was. Vansar. That's why you need the webber. Oh, webbed is, webbed is written on it is. the crib sheet. Uh, obviously, blaze. If I is subject to the blaze condition. When they're right. on fire. When they're on fire, <laughs> there you go. Uh, so, I don't know how useful for a game like Necromunda this play sheet is going to be. Oh, it's changed. Yeah, okay. I keep forgetting there's a new version. Because... <laughs> Come on. Because there's so many rules in Necromunda. Yeah. Um, may maybe I'm wrong, but that's the rule book. Mm. <laughs> and it, and it, a lot of it is rules. Yeah. So the cards, then, like this much of it is unit cards. And this is one of the things I thought was quite interesting to show you how tough the Gene Stealers are. It was worth looking at their stat cards. Um, Strength and toughness for. What is this game? The strength That's and tap us for three wounds. Three wounds is huge. Three attacks in this. Initiative 10 plus. And its attacks uh, are strength plus one, AP one, and two damage. That's huge. So they're going to kill. With rending. With rending. They're going to outright kill uh, many, many characters. And they've got a lot of skills built in. That's really. Yeah, that's pretty brutal. Yeah. It's not undoably brutal, but it's very, very good for a single fighter. Yes. I mean, just find a fighter with more than one wound and more than one attack. Yeah. It's in this game. You know, an Escher Ganger has got one attack at strength three. Mm. An Escher <laughs> boss has two wounds and two attacks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a yeah. lot of blank cards in here. For you to create your own fighters. Yeah. About half of them are blank cards. That's really cool. Yeah. And this is... This isn't the fighter cards for everybody. This is just the gene stealers. <laughs> oh, is it? Is oh it at God. the back of the uh, of the others, or maybe it's assumed? Nah, right. So this is interesting because oh. this brings us on to the, how this set works a little bit, doesn't it? Um, have we finished with all the? We haven't talked about the rule book. Now, if there is a drawback with Necromunda as a system, is it is a system of forty books? Within within the first year or two of Necromunda, when we were playing, they'd released about three books, and the rules change in book after book after book after yeah, book. Yeah, they, they released one book per quarter every year since the creation of the game. So this Since the relaunch like, of so the game. 2017, something like that? Yeah. Uh, 
and they often like retroactively they change they've changed rules mm -hmm. like core rules mm -hmm. as well as detailed rules because they usually they're a supplement for a particular gang or narrative component but they'll make a adjustments to existing rules, mm -hmm. which is why it's important that they may remake the core rulebook <laughs> periodically, which is one of the things that I was really attracted mm -hmm. to in this. Um, that but, isn't the core rulebook for Necromander, though. This isn't the core rulebook for Necromander? I don't think so. It'll have no. up-to-date rules, yeah. Of course, yes. But it's the Hive Secundus rulebook. It is the Hive Secundus rulebook. So, Hive Secundus, and very little of this is fluff. Mm. This is, we are at rules on page, I can't even see the page you numbers. Might even read page one or something. Uh, page 31, page 32. At uh, page 32, we'll see an introduction to the rules. And after that point, apart from a few pictures, it is just all rules oh. for another 174 pages. It's dense, it's heavy, it's on beautiful photographic mm. paper. But there is a lot to know here. One of the reasons it's so dense is because it, not only is it a rule set, is there's loads of equipment, there's loads of skills, there's a lot to go with it. Mm -hmm. So those are, the, those are the components. Now, the setting, what appealed to me about this set, and I hope that it was what appealed to you, mm. is its setting and how it's different, which we kind of got a glimpse of yeah. by looking at the fighter cards. Because they're not fighter cards, they are cards for... The high, not the hive scum, the Malstrain, the Malstrain faction, mm -hmm. because this isn't two rival gangs. No, it's not. This is a, a campaign, so to speak. It is a campaign set storyline. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you basically have a games master who who takes control of the Malstrain gene stealer side of things, um, and then there's a series of fixed missions that you play through. Um, and my understanding is that you play through these however many missions there are, probably six or eight or ten or whatever, a, a short number of them, and whatever you, whatever resources are spent in one game, you do not have for the next game. The, the I'm going to call them tech hunters. Hell yeah. The tech hunters um, the, from, the Van Sar. from the Van Sar side um, are diving deep into Hive Secundus to try and find something or other. I'm sure it will come across in the missions. Um, and as you lose models and as you use equipment, you, you don't get it back easily. Um, uh, so, yeah, it, it, there's attrition. And as the Games Master, your intention is to maximise that attrition. <laughs> and as the, the player, so to speak, uh, you, you're trying not to lose models or equipment. Yeah, so rather than it being... Um, it, it, it is persistent. Mm -hmm. But rather than being um, rival gangs, I think one of the important things about this is you can't re-recruit people mm. between missions. You can level up and you can get some new equipment. Because I think the story is it's representing, it's this, these Van, the Van Sar are trying to get some Archaeotech stuff. But I don't know whether the, whether it's the, the Van Sar are helping the Spryers Spiras. Spiras, yeah. or whether the Spiras are helping the Vansar. Or if the Spiras are just bored. <laughs> They're just yeah. rocking along for yeah. fun. <laughs> yeah. Because um, the Spiras are a really integral part of your ability to, to do this. Mm. Um, and just tell you. But yeah, the idea that it's kind of um, intended to be sort of an enclosed thing with... with a narrative. With a narrative yeah. where the Malstrains are, are picking from a set list, or it's even fixed in the scenarios, I yeah. think, saying, like, this is this mission, and then this is this mission. Your forces contain. <laughs> Absolutely. <Yeah. clears throat> because there's a big element about darkness, mm. and I don't know quite how that plays out, I think one of the other things that makes the Malstrains really dangerous is I don't think you can see them on six inches in front of oh, you, brutal. unless you've got some sort of night vision equipment yeah. or whatever, yeah, yeah. which may be one of the first things you want to invest in. Probably. So I think the Vansars <laughs> create a gang in the, in more or less the traditional sense. Mm. They then tag in a couple of these spirals, mm -hmm. and then they go. You could just laminate these, use them forever. Yes, it's yes. Probably not a terrible idea. Um, which mm -hmm. would explain why they didn't give you preset yeah, yeah. fighter cards for these. Um, even though it does recommend a way that you should build the models. Yes, yeah. Which is good, because the, the original box set was very fixed on what it was that you could take, and that was part of what was the unevenness, because one had, side had a bunch of strength four guns against toughness three, and the other side had yeah. a bunch of strength three the, guns the, against the, toughness four. <laughs> the Escher-Goliath <laughs> yeah. gang, they were, they were a terrible mismatch. Yeah. 
this is a terrible mismatch, but it <laughs> on purpose. <laughs> but I th- but I th- but I think it, I yeah. think it's on purpose, Excellent. and I don't think it's a terrible mismatch at the beginning. It's there's a resource management mm. uh, component to it, and a and a being cautious and so forth. But the idea of playing all too often with games with campaigns, we never quite get around to it. Mm. And and often you want it to be more than it is, and I, and I kind of increasingly like looking at when I get new systems and so forth with campaigns. I need to be playing the campaign from day one. Yeah. Because after I've played ten games of this system, I might be ready to do a campaign from my understanding of mm. the roles, but I'm not ready to do a campaign because mm. I don't really want to play another ten games of that that yeah. system at that point. So hopefully, this isn't like uh, I felt with Titanicus, where. It introduces you to the rules and like the missions sort of walk you through. It gives you an mm. easy mission at first so that you can sort of learn the rules as you go mm. a little bit and then it adds mechanics as it goes a little bit more. Right. Whereas with Titanicus, what it was was uh, you buy a box set, you're playing the game now. <laughs> like, yes. There's no introduction to the game whatsoever. It yes. Felt like I did see learn rules everything, being introduced in the scenarios. Yeah. I mean, there is a lot to read here mm. and it's difficult to know. I mean, does it... This is not an entry level game. Gang general principles, founding a gang, the rules. Ooh. There's not there's not a playing your first game. So the rules. And that was the case with Titanicus. Mm. The rules took the rules were ordered in the in the turn order. Right, so what you okay. did for your first game with Titanicus was you just read through the rule steps. You read the rule book while yeah, playing But the this game. section of the rules goes from page 67 to page 100. Right, yeah. As opposed to being six or eight pages. They're still walking through phases, though, and then the train and how the shooting works. The, well, the action phase, works. movement, terrain, shooting. Yeah. This is more like a traditional rule yeah. book. But there is no your first mission by the looks of I things. mean, unless Into the Underhills is Baby's first necromander. Oh, definitely. Yeah. It definitely is. Um, we'll see. Good to see kind of the last point on this and the story, which I think I'd picked up on, was the story of Necromunda mm. is moving on a little bit. Mm-hmm. It's like when, for most people who are at all connected with Necromunda, if you say like they're kind of immediately in that Escher Goliath rivalry, mm. but also interdependency, which I thought was quite clever. Yeah, yeah. It's like the chemicals that the Escher produced, the, va- the, the glass vats make the, the roids out of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they're, they're vat born, aren't they? So they, they kind of require. Right. The, the Goliath wouldn't exist without the Escher's chemicals, and the chemicals make the money that allows the Escher to continue to exist. Right. So, yeah, they, they've got that thing going on. And the Orlocks make sure that everything is maintained, and like the planet wouldn't function without all of these disparate forces, except maybe the the weird ones that John likes. They're cops. No, not the corpse grinder cult. Uh, anyway, um, the spy ones. You mean is it Delac? The Delac. ones that are like the Hellraiser guys. Delac, the ones that are like the Hellraiser guys. Who yeah, have I think re- they just imported the Hellraiser guy into the uh, setting because it was big at the time. It probably was. Yeah, they've got some really weird fluff behind the, the they? Delac. Yeah, apparently they're worshiping a fish god under there somewhere. Mate, that sounds legit yeah, to me. It does sound if legit. I lived in the Necromunda, I'd be worshiping <laughs> yeah. anything to feed me. <laughs> um, so yeah. that that mm-hmm. kind of story has been fixed in that moment since the early 90s. Mm. And that is still a part of what's going on, but what's happened over the past few years, if you've been following the story, through the game settings for Necromunda, mm. is the, the kind of Imperial Regent, who's called, he's not called Hell's Reach. High Lord Helmore. Helmore. Yep. He's kind of lost control mm. of, um, of, the, of the seat of government. Okay, it's, interesting. I believe, and and he's gone and headed off to Hive Secundus to try and create a new power base or something. It's, I'm, I, or, or somebody has in yeah. relation to him losing, declining oh, authority. House Helmut so then, was just the house that always got mentioned, but you never played because they were too rich. Yeah, like those, yeah, because they're, they're, they're the Aristos, not the gangs, right? Yeah, yeah. But who are their gang? Well, their gang are the Palatine Enforcers. Yeah. Yes. In, in in Necromunda. The police. So the whole like Ash Waste setting that they created was because there are there is an exodus oh. from Necromunda okay. to Hive Secundus because of a change in the power relationship. Oh. I'm probably misrepresenting some of the details, but the broad principle is okay. there. And then they've gone, so they've said, okay, now they've got to Hive Secundus. Mm-hmm. What's it actually like there? Well, it's a lot worse. A goddamn mess. <laughs> and, and, and I like that as a game that's fundamentally 
you wouldn't play this game if you weren't engaged with the narrative. Mm. So the fact that they are now driving the narrative to create new settings for the game... Yeah, that's very cool. I think is really good. Mm. I'm not saying that everyone... Everyone's going to have... That wants to play Necromunda is going to have their favourite gang. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you... I think it specifically tells you, don't try and play a not Van Saar gang in here. Oh, cool. Don't okay. try and play one of the regular gangs. Yeah. You'll get murdered. Mm. You can bodge it. They're not even providing conversion rules. They're suggesting, like, you could try and bodge it, but it's probably not going to work oh, okay. out very well. Because I think they're they just probably... They might add them later, right? Or is there a book coming out? I think there's a book coming out for other that. people to interact. Right. But I think other people are just not going to have access to the tools you need to complete these missions. Oh, okay. Now, whether that's sort of a new power level of the game Maybe. as well... This is like a special forces group that's been sent in. It's like a commando group uh, with some Merc super commanders. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, I don't think any number of Escher Jews can make their way through <laughs> those mouse friend gene stealers. As much as you believe that a Jew with a last gun is the only way to play this game, James. Once upon a time, sir. Once upon a time, that was what it was all about. Um, in the dark days. So, yeah. If you've not tried Necromunda before and you're interested, I think this is a nice fixed mm. setting. If you want to move beyond this, there is a book which at the time of recording is releasing this weekend or, mm. or the next weekend. Um, and if you really like a deep dive into something where the rules are a bit clunky... Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, and yeah. there's 10 different types of knife and all those kind of things... 50% of your game is set up and take down. And, <laughs> yeah. And all the rules Necromon are related to that. definitely going to provide uh -huh. that space with a campaign setting. Mm. I just like... I think this might be turn out to be a good way to introduce someone to Necromunda Hopefully. and why it's cool mm. who d not invested because of that kind of GM player relationship yeah, yeah, yeah. you've got in the missions I am clearly the bad guys you sir can be the good guys for this game right. please work your way through these missions well, it turns out the good guys are rad they're rad as hell <laughs> they're literally rad so rad alright that was Alpha I'm really excited about it. We didn't mention the price. I'll put it on because I never remember the price of the thing. Yeah. We have to order these things weeks before mm. we actually review them. I'll put it on the screen now, but I don't remember it being onerous. Thank you for watching. Bye bye. Bye. If you're still here and you're looking for ways to support the channel, there's obviously a lot of ways down in the description. But a key way is to use our affiliate links to Whaling Games and others. You buy your models from them, it doesn't cost you a penny more, and we earn a little bit of commission. Thank you.